today. Okay, let's first talk about Wi-Fi and hardwiring. Wi-Fi means you're not hardwired or there's no wire between you and your internet source. Hardwiring obviously is the opposite. If you want the best possible speed, hardwiring with an ethernet cable, it's called, from your router will always be best. Of course, if you're in a hotel or some other shared environment, this may not be possible. And don't tell me you work at home on a tablet or cell phone. You know how they always say there's an app for that? Well, there's an adapter for that. For iPhone users, it's called a lightning to ethernet adapter. For Androids, and I think the iPad Pro also will use this, it's a USB-C to ethernet adapter. Older Androids, uh, I'm pretty sure, use the micro USB to ethernet adapter. Anyway, there are adapters to hardwire your device. Now, let's talk about the types of internet connections you may have. I'm not even gonna talk about dial-up, all right, even though it does still exist, believe it or not. Let's start with cable, which is very common. Here's the pros and cons of cable. The pro is that it's readily accessible. It's all over the place. And it can be lightning fast. I'm not talking about a lightning port on your iPhone. I'm talking about lightning fast. The con is that it can slow up worse than dial up when lots of people are on it. I had a mentee the other day book a Zoom consultation at 6 p.m. Eastern time. And her connection was so bad, we had to switch to a telephone call. I told her about the fact that cable can slow down terribly when lots of people are on, which would be the case when, when lots of people get home from work after five and start using their cable. Now, if you're stuck in that situation, one thing you can do is schedule your big uploads and downloads and streaming at different times during the day when less people are on. That's one workaround. Another possible service you may have is DSL. DSL has the advantage of constant speed no matter how many people are on it. <laughs> but the download of this is that the speed that you can get has to do with how far physically your home or office is from the switching station of the provider. Another possibility is fiber optics. These cables are considered the most reliable and can give you a super, super fast, constant speed, both uploading and downloading, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But even then, the scumbag providers will sell you a speed and then still provide you with a slower speed because most people, especially if you don't listen to this podcast, have no idea that they're getting screwed so the companies can get away with it. I don't want you to be the one of those people that gets screwed over. And yeah, I want you to screw the commute, but not get screwed over, <laughs> okay? All right, now before I talk about upload and download speeds, I should mention one other type of internet provider, which currently you see a lot of in the more rural areas, and that's satellite. About the only advantage I can see of this type of service is that you can get it about anywhere, no matter how far from <laughs> civilization you live. The downside is it's slow, it's expensive, and I'm pretty sure it's affected by weather. At least that's what I hear from users. I never used it myself. Plus, you have to have a receiver transmitter dish antenna with access to the sky. Okay, let's talk about upload and download speeds. In most of the services I just mentioned, download speeds are faster than upload speeds, but not always. Download means how long it takes for data to come from the internet down to your location or device like your computer, your cell phone, tablet, smart TV, all that stuff. Upload speeds are how long things take to be delivered from your device up 
to the 